it was bound to happen, and it did. We crossed the border at North Portal from south of Esteban in Saskatchewan into North Dakota. You had to bring up chicken and eggs, didn't you, Amy? our last stretch of the Alcan today. We're leaving Fort Nelson, headed to Dawson Creek. Um, we're also about to do something that- Needs done very- good. I'm embarrassed to say, we have not washed our rig. We've had another opportunity to wash it. Nope, since Tope. Since Tope, when we first got to Alaska. Yeah, so we need to knock off some dirt and we can get on the road. I'm so sad. <laughs> we keep forgetting what country we're in. Yes, we have quarters, uh -huh. uh, but we need Canadian. <sighs> the car wash I, I went to, they have a long bay. Maybe we stop by. Is it tall? 14, six, 14. Six. Now, why would it be in feet? Why wouldn't it be in meters? Okay, even better. No, what they. <laughs> when you went to it, you want to tell me they have the height posted in feet? I, do. I hope it's 14 meters. That'd be huge. Right. Oh, we have one and a half miles left on the Alcan. Technically, yeah. Yes. We are one and a half miles from mile zero in Dawson Creek, and we're about, if all goes well, <laughs> and we don't have a flat, or <laughs> we don't have a... I've already, I've already checked the leaf spring. Okay. We're good. As long as we can make that one and a half miles, we will have done the Alcan. Yes. Woo! Thank goodness that's it. Yes. 1,390 miles up it. 1,390 miles back. Right now we're in line at an RV wash. This is probably our fourth attempt to wash the RV. A lot of the ones in Alaska that you'll find online are closed. They weren't open. 50 minutes later. And we actually had to back up down the road. So apparently he has to back out. You know, we're in it to win it this time. We did have to buy some good old options to hang in there with this one. And there's a large motorhome behind us that I hope they're back there making lunch and watching a movie. So take a minute. I had actually fixed my hair today, which happened in a month, because I had Zoom meetings this morning, and now I am soaking wet. But then she's, she's looking so much better. It's white again. We have to pull out of here into a dust bowl. Every time someone drives through here, it's just a cloud of dust, but it's not mud, it's not caked on, and it is 400% improved from what it was 30 minutes ago. Back to where at least this leg of the trip all started. There is the beginning of the Alaska Canadian Highway. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle of the podcast. Yep. And an interesting conversation. Yes. Jim, great. I thought we were about to have an accident. So, uh, so I've been seeing Crooked Creek Donuts. It was a food truck and Grand Prairie, I think. Um, they said they were there. And boom, I guess this is their mothership. So we're in Crooked Creek. What are you going to do? But I don't like donuts. But Amy saw some, my, uh, uh, some bread and... I did get some multi-grain bread. Yeah, so. so everybody went, oh, and a little bag of dog treats. Oh, the, oh, Jim great. got donuts, dogs got dog treats, Amy got multi-grain bread, Every, everybody's winning. And it's Amy's turn to drive. <laughs> Just call it the Edmonton. Um, what, about six hour drive? Yeah, we're in the, we are in the lap of luxury. Oh, wow. We have gone from a summer in Alaska to the exact opposite of a summer in Alaska, which, not knocking a summer in Alaska. Okay? No, no, but. But we're in a fancy RV resort. We are in a true RV resort. Yeah. And it is, it's nice. We just checked in. We have plenty room on either side of us. We can't touch either one of our neighbor's slides. We have slides. a paver patio. What? Paver, let me say one jump. A paver patio. Let's talk about internet. 
Oh, yes, we have, I think, four different devices, full-on internet. We're going to be streaming tonight, catching up on some shows. And Amy, what is that green stuff out there on the ground? I have never seen this green stuff. It's, it's an interesting texture, and apparently when you walk into the RV, it doesn't come with you. It stays out what? there. What is that? I don't know. It's soft. It's soft. And it's clean. It's neat. Yes, it is. The dogs seem to actually love that stuff, whatever it is. So They just keep eating on it. So, um, whatever that green stuff is, I, I vaguely remember it from our past. Kind of like the night sky. Yeah, well, yes. And truck stops. Oh, we got our first truck stop today in, I don't know, three months, it seems like. Yeah. Um, three months since May. And... We were so happy to see it. Fun fact, number one, I make them matches. Fun fact, number two, we left from Valdez, and we, now that we're in Edmonton, British Columbia, I mean, Alberta, sorry, Alberta, love you. We have traveled 34 map hours. We've probably traveled more like 70 some hours, but 34 hours from Valdez to Edmonton, 33 hours from Edmonton to my mother's house, which is where we're going next. And it's not quite home, but it's one of our homes. So we are just a wee tad over halfway there. It's an unexpected place to be. Yeah, exactly. We're actually here by accident. Yep. Yeah. We're at the uh, University of Alberta. In Edmonton. Yep. And we're about to get on a park and ride bus to go to the Heritage Festival, which is a holiday here the first week of August. Yes, three day weekend for them. And this festival represents a hundred different countries and cultures, that sounds like fun. We didn't realize they didn't have parking. Big long lines. So what you have to do is just go from country to country, stand in line and eat from the previous. <laughs> And that's what a festival is all about. Right. Happy accident. Yeah, exactly. A festival celebrating all kinds of different cultures. The Heritage Festival. It was really neat to see families there, like large groups of families were gathering, and you could tell they were probably doing something like an annual family photo in front of the country that represented their family's culture. So it's fun to see that. So many pretty costumes. I'm not sure what we were gonna do, taking a few days off the road. We're in Edmonton, Alberta, because we know it's gonna be a friendly, beautiful city and it's not disappointing. Nope, it's not. We're on the road again today, on our way to Saskatoon. Saskatoon is the largest city in the province of Saskatchewan. We've never been to Saskatchewan. We haven't. We have it to find out that I cannot be confused for a Canadian this was one of the greatest moments of the trip <laughs> for Jim we were talking to a gentleman and we talked to him for about 15 20 minutes Norbert we did say a prayer for you we did we promised we would and um, he said it was quite obvious that we were from the States because of your wife's accent and I took a lot of joy in, um, there seeing that just yesterday people thought that I was from Canada so I have been assumed a local once. Right. But I'm not sure those people were from Canton. <laughs> Day unknown <laughs> on our travel bag. I have no idea. What is this, seven? Day oh, seven? gosh, no. Eight, nine, ten. Day ten. Oh, see. Day ten on our way back. Uh, we're about to pull out. This is, uh, where are we? <laughs> we're in Saskatchewan. Right, we're in Saskatchewan. Which town? Um, Saskatoon. Saskatoon. Yeah, close. So, we're going to head, we're, we're actually going to go to a border town. Estevan. Yeah, Estevan. We were both pronouncing that wrong. Our Canadian friend from yesterday set us straight on that one. So we're going to pull out. Well, it's our last morning in Canada. 
We're about 30 minutes from the border. Take it off first thing. We got about a six hour drive. For some reason, crossing into the US worries me more than crossing into Canada, which makes no sense. It's like at some point the United States isn't gonna want me back, but we're gonna get going. We finally got boarded and inspected. Crossing the border from south of Estevan, Saskatchewan into North Dakota, the North Portal. This has never happened to us before. And we have crossed the borders on this trip alone so many times. We always prepare, we're always diligent. We always know what you're not supposed to bring about the border. We always comply. And yesterday, hand to God, I was like, I'm not in the mood to do this again. Um, I obviously know roughly what you can and cannot bring back in the United States, but they post special restrictions all the time. So as it happened, on July 22nd, they posted no chicken, no chicken byproducts coming back into the United States. Uh, Canada won't let them in from the United States, and now United States says also can't come back. This is all in response to avian bird flu. So what happened, Jim? Now, our border, in all fairness, our border crosser, uh, our border agent, uh, English was his second language. Yes. Okay. So, and that's fine. And he was very conversational. Oh, very. Very. Which is not the norm. But Amy said, I looked it up on the website and saw I could not bring chicken and eggs. And it was like radar went off. Ding, 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 ding. Chicken and eggs. We always say, don't say anything that they don't ask you. But Amy was just trying to say, hey, well, I understand what was it supposed to be. What I was really trying to do is say, Tell me if there's something I'm not supposed to be bringing, and I'm not going to bring it. He said, I didn't find any chicken or eggs, right? Right. Or something. So it. he asked us to please get out of the vehicle, unlock the RV, said I still have to inspect it. Um, he made us wait at the front quarter. He was very firm about that. Told you to get back. Get back over there. Do not move. I'm just making sure he had what he needed. But he came out of the RV, and he said, okay, you're good. And I said, okay. I knew we were. And he said, did you say something about chicken and eggs? And I said, no, I said, I know we can't bring it, so I don't have any. And he said, well, I looked through your refrigerator and I couldn't find any chicken or eggs. I said, That's right. So yeah, there was some language um, difficulty there that probably created a situation that, that didn't need to happen. That is why we were born. So I said, uh, when Amy was in the car, getting ready for us to pull out, and I said, I was more nervous. I don't know why. But I'm more nervous at a U.S. crossing than I am a Canadian crossing. Have no idea why that is, but apparently, <laughs> one of these times the U.S. is gonna be like, "No, nah, we don't want you no more." Spent a day, about a day and a half off the road in Champaign, <laughs> Illinois. Happens to be where two of our closest friends, husband and wife, met at University of Illinois and a former colleague of ours, good friend, grew up here. Yep. And her crazy sister. <laughs> crazy um, sister. <clears throat> well, we're we're getting down to it tonight will be the last night in the RV, which seems very strange after spending so much time in it. It just it just hit us like a ton of bricks. It's been three months this run. It has. So that's, that's a long run, but I got to tell you, I'm a little sad about it. And I missed home this time. I miss our house. I miss our garbage disposal, our laundry room, and our dishwasher. I miss our family and friends. So I'm excited. Absolutely. It's one of the reasons we always say we're not full timers is we, we can go and go and go, but we always, we always enjoy going the end of any amazing experience is a little bittersweet, so this is no exception. That has to have been what the hundredth time. It felt like it, but I'm sure it probably has been more than more than twenty times. It seems like every time we pull out, our neighbors tell us that our bag jacks are in. Our this rig, they do rod load, and it scares people. <laughs> And thank you, RV community, for giving the heads up. I'm not complaining, but it's comical now. That, but every time they say it, I feel like I have to get out of the truck and look because Murphy's Law, the one time I don't, they'll actually be dead. So 
Let's get on the road. 16 days ago. Yes. We pulled out of Valdez. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> it does. It seems it like, seems like 16 days ago. 160 days ago. <laughs> last stop before, well, sort of our last stop. Stop in to see family, like we said. But this is our last campground. This is our last, last campground. Last night staying in the rig, possibly forever. We'll see. Um, but we have about a four hour jaunt down to where my family lives. We're going to spend a few days with my mom. And before you know it, this time next week, we'll look up and we'll be back to normal. Absolutely not. That's going to, we're going to have a long recovery period from this one. Um, but we will be back at our house with uh, the rest of our pets and loved ones. So it is, it is really weird that it happened at all. We planned it for so long that it felt like it would never happen. Yep. And now it's done. So it's done. Uh, no regrets. Let's, None. uh, let's get hooked up. Uh, Maybe all those tires. Okay. Maybe at least three. Other than that, no regrets. Very appropriate. Last time pulling out of camp this trip. Man weighs me down. He's worried that our back jacks are too low and we forgot <laughs> to raise them. At least, I swear, it's had to be at least 30 times this summer. I'm telling you, <laughs> when this girl flirts, <laughs> watch it's out. Progressive flirtation <laughs> going here.